Francesca Klug, Professorial Research Fellow here at LSE, Centre for the Study of Human Rights, author of a number of books, but mainly known, I think, for having driven through the ideas that underpin the UK Human Rights Act, passed in 1998. The Human Rights Act is a bit of a disaster, isn't it? Nobody seems to like it. One of the main parties has pledged to repeal it. it hasn't done what people expected, has it? It's interesting, actually, because the polling evidence, in spite of the onslaught of propaganda against the Human Rights Act this year, hasn't quite lived up to the expectations of those who've trashed it day in, day out for the last You mean ordinary people years. have been asked, have they? Yes, and it, the, the polling is nothing like as dramatic as you would expect it to be. It always amazes me that it's not worse than it is. You know, if you give them a leading question, do you think that terrorists should have human rights to go around killing people? They tend to say no. But if you ask a much more open-ended question, it's, it's much more mixed. Mm. Um, I don't think it has been a disaster, actually. I think it's, what it's been is shedding light on where we are as a society. And it's very interesting as an academic to talk about it yeah. from that point of view. Yeah, yeah. The right don't like it, though, because they think its political correctness gone mad and that it's all this European stuff. And yet the left say, the trade unions, people who are victims of austerity and so on, this thing has done nothing for us. So it's kind of getting squeezed, isn't it, by both left and right politics. I'm not sure that's true, actually, because the trade union movement has got keener and keener on it, actually, from the days that uh, you and I will remember, when yeah. there was a sort of, you know, knee-jerk reaction against yeah. the idea of human rights to seem too individualistic. Yeah, exactly. Because, actually, the European Convention on Human Rights has provided one of the only underpinnings to the right to join a trade union in an age where trade unions have been so squeezed, They've actually grown to support it, and I think you'll see the TUC supporting it from what I understand. But Labour's pretty quiet, aren't it? Well, they introduced it. Yeah, um, they haven't done much about it, have they? No, they, they take some responsibility for sure for the lack of understanding of the Human Rights Act. But look, let's think about it for a second. Here we are on the 800th anniversary of the Magna Carta. Mm -hmm. So as a society, we're being told, certainly by the establishment, and um, it's a perfectly credible argument, that we should celebrate this 800-year-old document at the same time that the Prime Minister's party is seriously talking about not just repealing the Human Rights Act, but taking steps to withdraw from the European Convention on Human Rights, which is something that no one thought any party would ever argue for mm. when it was introduced 60 years ago. What does this say about us as a society? Does it tell us that actually, you know, it's very comfortable to talk about freedoms and even rights when it's a medieval document that has no legal impact at all and is seen as sort of the font of what being English, British, question mark, is, but we're very uncomfortable with a universal document that everyone can use so that yeah. when people were detained, terror suspects were detained indefinitely without trial or put under a form of house arrest, it wasn't the Magna Carta that's meant to be the font of liberty and freedom from torture that they could use. It was actually the Human Rights Act. The Human Rights Act. That is the reason why it's unpopular with government. Sure. I mean, it's unpopular with government, I can see that. But nevertheless, there's a kind of pincer movement of opposition from quite a lot of parties. And I'm wondering whether any bits of it could have been done better. Could we have called it, for example, it's called the Human Rights Act, but it's got all this stuff from the European Convention. Are there any bits of it that you feel, oh gosh, I wish I'd advised differently then? Well, it's very self-serving to say the truth, which is that the Human Rights Act as a phrase was not one that those who were lobbying for a Bill of Rights based on universal principles, that was the point, based on universal rather than nationalist principles, we didn't call it the Human Rights Act. We, call, we argued for a British Bill of Rights or a People's Charter using the Chartist language or something that was more familiar to the English, British, So the UK problem in a way is this human rights thing is a little bit, like, sort of a little bit, if we're being honest with ourselves, running against the grain of British culture, is it? I think there's something in that, but I don't know that young people feel that. And do we want to be, as a society, one that stands by a medieval document as defining us, or do we want to enter at least the 20th century, if we can't enter the 21st century, and basically own the universal human rights that the whole of the rest of the world signs up to and support because they come from the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. That's what these rights are. Do you think we'll have the Human Rights Act as part of UK law in five years? If the Conservatives and UKIP don't get in in some form or another, then I would say yes, and I think it will bed down. And it doesn't really matter what it's called. The point is that it must stay universal. Are you a political academic or a pure academic? I feel that I am a pure academic who's constantly forced by, for example, someone like yourself in these questions, to be a political academic. But I think what I am is an engaged academic. Um, Francesca Trump, thank you so much for submitting yourself to the Guilty Grilling. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you.